So 3.5 takes another look at graphing, but from a different perspective. We're not looking at points anymore and connecting them. We're actually going to look at um, taking a point and rising and running according to the slope. What value do we have? It's positive, it's negative. We'll take a look at both. So we can graph a line if we know the coordinates of two points. We've seen that. Two points on the line. We can also graph a line if we know the slope and the y-intercept. So if it's in the y equals mx plus b form, we're going to be able to graph really quickly. And if we're just given the point of the y-intercept and the slope, we can also graph that really fast. So the first example, we want to draw a line that has slope 1 fourth and y-intercept 0 2. So the point tells us where to start. That is going to fall on my line. So we first want to plot the y-intercept, 0, 2. So I know my line is going to cross the axis there. Line has to go through it. From there, we want to rise according to the numerator and run according to the denominator. So from that point, I want to rise, 1, run, 1, 2, 3, 4. Make another point. From that point, again, you could rise, 1, run, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. My other option for the slope, since I have positive slope, what are my other options? I'm also going to have uh, points on the line that fall down here. So, according to the slope, what else could we do? What's equivalent? Negative 1 over negative 4. Since a negative divided by a negative gives us positive from the y-intercept or from any point really on the line, we could fall one and run back one, two, three, four. That's also going to fall on the line. And we can see that it does. So as we connect those dots, we know where the y-intercept happened at. I'll just mark that again. And we can label this line. We know what the equation looks like since we know the slope and the y-intercept. So let's do that. This line is y equals m x plus b, e, our y-intercept. So that line is 1 fourth x plus 2. Now, let's look at the second one. Now I have slope minus 2 thirds, y-intercept 0, 4. So what are my different options for that negative on the slope? If I have one out in the front, where can I give it? I can either give it to the top or give it to the bottom. But not both. If I give it to both, what happens? It turns into a positive. We're changing it all together. So when we have one negative, we can give it to the top or to the bottom, but not both at the same time. So I still know it's going through the point 0, 4. So we'll mark our y-intercept. And our slope was positive before, so it was increasing left to right. What is this one going to do? should be decreasing since it's negative. So if it doesn't look like that in the end, we know we've done something wrong. So from there, I want to move according to my slope. I'm just going to work from the first one. So falling two, running positive one, two, three, making a point. We could do it again from there to get another point, draw our line more accurate. Falling two, running one, two, three. What else could we have done? Other option for the slope, rise two, fall back one, two, three. Also still falls on that line. Okay, connect the dots. Hopefully you have a straight edge. Yours will be better than mine. Oh, it takes too much time. So it's decreasing left to right like we thought it would since the slope is negative. And what is the equation of this line? Y equals negative two-thirds x plus... Four. Where is the y-intercept happening at? Good. So next for you, draw a line with the following information. What equa equation is graphed? So draw me the line. Tell me what is the actual definition of the line. So the first one, we have slope 2 fifths. So it should be increasing left to right. Y-intercept 0 minus 3. So it's going to cross in the bottom half plane. So what's it looking like? We graph our point first where I know the line is going to go through. And from there, I'm moving according to my slope, rising to, running, one, two, three, four, five. OK, 
Okay, rise two, one, two, three, four, five, just to get a good idea what the picture looks like. Or what else could we do? Fall two, run backwards, one, two, three, four, five. Your grid pictures will be more accurate than mine, but you get the idea. So we have the option to both fall and go backwards. Okay. Last. You had a slope of 6, y-intercept minus 3. So how can we rewrite that slope as a fraction? How can we make it be a rise over a run? 6 over what is equivalent to 6? 1. So for every 6 units I'm running, or excuse me, rising, I'm running 1. So we're going through the point 0, 3, minus 3, down below. From there, I'm moving 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, running 1. Steep slope. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, running 1. So that's a lot more significant. My picture was not very accurate, but that's okay. Scooch it over a little bit. <laughs> or, from this point, we could have done what? Fall 6, run backwards 1. We also fall on that line. So we have that option. Sometimes when you're working on the homework in my math lab, the grid, you might be going off the grid to make your second point if you have a positive slope, but you always have the option to negate them both and travel in the other direction. Last thing we want to look at. If I'm given the equation of the line, not explicitly what the slope and the y-intercept are, we can still graph uh, just the same as we have. We just have to pluck off the information. So, the first example that we're going to look at is already in the slope-intercept form. Y is on its own, everything else is to the right. So, what is my slope in this case? Three-fourths, the value, the coefficient on the front of X, and my Y-intercept is going through the point zero, five, the constant on the end. So, we can get that information like we've had before and graph it just the same. So, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and what's going to happen in this case? On my picture that's drawn, if I'm rising 3, running 4, I'm off my grid and out of frame. So what else can I do to graph this line? How else could I rewrite that slope? 3 over 4 is the same as minus 3 over minus 4. So from that point, falling, 1, 2, 3, running backwards, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, yes, it would still go through whatever point I was going to draw up in here, but you can't see it. But now we have a good representation of that line. So that might happen to you in the homework, where you have to look at the slope in a different way to make it fit on your grid. And the next one. How is it different than what we've just seen? I can't pluck off the slope and the y-intercept yet because it's not in the slope-intercept form. So we need to solve for that one first. So I need y on its own. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. We write the x-coordinate first, just so you don't make the mistake, which is the slope, which is the y-intercept. And I need y on its own, so we need to divide all sides by 3. So the slope is minus 2 thirds. And what is the coefficient on the end? 3 divided by 3 gives me 1. So, slope, negative two-thirds, so we have the option to give the negative up or down when we're drawing our picture. Y-intercept happens at 0, 1. So again, let's plot. 0, 1 is my y-intercept. From there, I am going to rise 2 and fall back 1, 2, 3. Or I could have done what? Fall 2 run one, two, three, and we'll also fall on the line. Generally, we want to plot more than one point when they're close like this anyway, so we have an accuracy at the end of our line. But all we have to do is get it into that slope intercept form. It's nice. We can pluck off those values. So give this one a shot. Solve for the y equals mx plus b form and graph based on the slope and the y-intercept. So you had to get y on its own. We have to move. 3x to the other side, you will become negative. And want y 
all by its lonesome. Slope is minus 3 fourths. A uh, constant on the end, or the y-intercept, happens at 3. So again, slope, I have the option to give the negative up or down. And the y-intercept happens 0, 3. Okay, so let's draw. Through, I'm going to draw on this one. More my height. 0, 3. And from there, I'm going to fall. 1, 2, 3. Run. 1, 2, 3, 4. Or we could have done the opposite. Go up, one, two, three, back, one, two, three, four. Okay. If we're graphing more than one line in a plane together, we want to label. Just a good habit to get into anyway. Did it for those two, but we'll do it for the last. Because that is a descriptor of what that line looks like. So to graph a line, we either need two points, slope and a point, or we can just have the definition of the line pluck off the values when it's in that slope-intercept form.